brother. Dude, that's hilarious. Right. That's, okay, that's, here we go. I'm gonna go live now. What's up, everybody? It's Jonathan Hardesty. I'm here with my man DaCosta from Sense Labs, and I'm gonna be painting Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. I did a little sketch, and uh, I'm gonna be using my Sense Lab gear. And I'm gonna be painting uh, Captain Crunch. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be representing today, DaCosta. I'm gonna be representing. What's up, everybody? It's oh, Jonathan Hardesty. I'm here with my man DaCosta from Sense Labs, and I'm gonna be painting Captain Crunch. And I'm get I'm getting that echo, just so you know, man. And, uh, yeah, you're good though. Lab gear. I'm skipping ahead, actually. Um, I, I have a couple like color layers for you guys. I'm going to be skipping ahead a bit just because we only have a limited amount of time, but I'm going to get rolling. This I'm going to get rolling. This is looking awesome. I can't believe you actually took up the suggestion to go. I know. Well, we, you guys, just so you know, like we were talking about what we should do. Like, what should I do? You know, and, and, and <laughs> we were kicking around the idea of a portrait. And DaCosta was like, hey, why don't, why don't you, uh, why don't you just like, you know, jazz it up a little bit and, and uh, do like Captain Crunch or something? I think you were just kind of, it was like an offhand kind of thing. And, yeah. and I was like, yes, I will do that. And then that was it. That's, I mean, it, it was the first suggestion. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. I was like, I got to well, I, I just love the tone of those, the, the picture in the bottom left with the, <laughs> the, the juxtaposition of Captain <laughs> Crunch was, just sounded, it tickled my brain. Well, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Cause like, for me, like, it's kind of, it's, I, I'm realizing like the older I get to like, it, that's sort of my my jam is like taking something that's normally revered and kind of messing it up a little bit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like I like going into like rich parties and, you know, talking and I do, and I've done this before, like, and talk to people about, you know, whatever, I don't know, Play-Doh or, or whatever. And then, and then literally start talking to them about how my dog's pooping on my rug or something and just to see how they respond. So I, I like it. I like to combine those two worlds. So let's get the, Let's get the high end and the, <laughs> and the low end. And and the low end. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. It's like we got to give a good treatment to uh, to Captain Crunch here. You know, he needs some love. I grew so up with him, man. About, like a little bit about your process. Where did you start out with this? And what, what's your when you go into it? What do you obviously the, you had a theme, a little bit of a, a brief. Yeah. So so first off, starting with just a sketch to get like, you know, what what I wanted him to look like. And I kind of wanted I was going for something that was somewhere in between cartoon and reality. So like it's kind of in an uncomfortable place when you go in between cartoon and reality. But but, you know, the inspiration was was for this was uh, all the classical paintings like that sergeant and stuff. You'll see like that dark edge on this sergeant like this, like he'll have this dark edge of his face up against the light background and then the light part of his face up against like a dark background. There's like these very uh you know common things like with north lighting and different stuff like that and 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 there's all these themes that happened in in all forms of classical painting and so i i started with that that's why i'm sort of toning down the color a little bit and making it like a palette that would be achievable with a uh with oil paints you know that kind of a thing and so i gotta give him the the you know the the like bougarot treatment you know gotta give him the <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is fun though and actually it, it fits that i have sergeant because i think i remember reading when sergeant put his paintings up in the gallery they were all saying like these are so loose and these are so like they were like he's not like he's basically he's not skilled or whatever like they were they were throwing shade at him when he did that mm -hmm. which is interesting just so funny to think of somebody thinking of sergeant as not being a draftsman you know it's hilarious I think I think usually I think there's going to be the you're always going to have your your haters right. That's, haters yes. have always. Existed. Yes, they're they abound, don't they? You know, I've had, but actually, you know, what's funny is I've had I've learned a lot from people who are kind of trolls or whatever. I've learned a lot from them because they, a lot of times they will tell the truth. Like you really want to know what's going on in a painting of yours, and you know, I'll post something. They're like, "Oh, this is so yeah. underwhelming in this way." or this shape or this form, you know, and you're like, Oh, that's kind of true. Actually. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a guy railing on me on the internet and, uh, and was saying like, it's funny. Cause I had this, had this uh, painting. Um, and he was like, uh, he said, Oh, he's definitely, he's definitely projecting that up on there. And, 
you know, like I can tell. And he's got, had all these like diagrams he made in like Photoshop. And he's like, and it's funny because this friend of mine was like, hey, look at this, uh, look at this blog post or this forum or whatever. And so I went on the forum. And what's funny is I had done that as a live stream. So I had pictures of myself doing it live with holding the photo because it's like a five foot painting or six foot painting. And I did it while I was holding the photo. And I said, actually, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't project it. I said, I don't really need to anymore. I said, not that there's anything wrong with projecting it. I was like, I could have, I said, but I didn't. I said, and here's the proof. And everybody was like, Oh, to the guy. You know? <laughs> so, but, but then he said some things like in the midst of all that, that were actually really helpful. And I was like, actually, this everything you said there is completely false. I was like, but this is actually really good. That's going to help me get better. And it's kind of brutal honesty. So I, I kind of like the trolls a little bit. No, yeah, a little bit. I think, yeah, if you, if you definitely want to get people, get information from people, I think there's the, the compliments are interesting, but you also want to be able to take the, the hard notes because I mean, nobody's necessarily perfect. So that's it, right. You want to be every, everything's a growing experience. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and you know, I mean, it's kind of like, I always try, my wife and I are, we're like brutally honest with each other. So she'll be like, how does this dress, you know, look? And I'll be like, well, it, it looks bad. You know, we just say, I just say it looks bad. Like, and I, <laughs> I had a group of friends that got together once and they, they, one of them was saying, my wife's the most beautiful woman in the world. And I started laughing and my wife and I started laughing and they were like, what, you don't think your wife's the most beautiful woman in the world? And I started laughing. I said, of course not. And the, everybody's like, oh, everybody got real uncomfortable. And I said, well, why do you think I married her? I said, and I said, open up a GQ magazine. I said, do I look like any of those dudes? I was like, no. I was like, come on, let's be, let's start with honesty here. <laughs> you know? So, so that's my style. I, I'm always, uh, I prefer people to just be straight up. Right. <laughs> I think that would be Captain Crunch's style too. I think like on the off days when he's not like, I, I imagine him like, um, you know, what he's not doing this stuff, like he's doing in the corner here, like, you know, doing the ad campaign that he right. goes home and he like complains to his wife about how he has to be so happy all the time, you know? Right. He's like, oh, the studio is so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's just cereal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny, man. Yeah. No, I think yeah, it'd be interesting, interesting to do a little bit of a, a little comedy on that. That would, that would be fun, man. In the life of a celebrity mascot for cereal. Yeah, they're all in the back, like in the green room, like yeah. complaining. About... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure, I'm sure Robot Chicken may have done it or will. Do oh, it. they might have. Yeah, you're right. They're like, yeah, yes. They've they've done a bunch of funny stuff like that. Oh, here comes Tony the Tiger or whatever. Like, oh, I hate this guy or whatever, you know. Hey Tony, how you doing? You're doing great. He always says that. Right, so right. right. He's so tired of people saying that to him on the street. Great. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, that would be fantastic. So I think in that terms of like, good. so those kind of ideas of how you get, you know, you know, how you get the, the character stuff done, or you want to kind of tell that story. How are you? Like what, what's going on in your head about? Yeah. That? Yeah. So it's, it's, I remember Richard Schmidt talking about like this concept and it was always an interesting concept to me. It's like, he said, like, you can get like the innocence in, in a, uh, you could talk about the innocence in a child's eyes. You could talk about whatever he's like, but at some point you have to convert it to technique to, for it to make sense to the viewer. So mm -hmm. in a, at a certain point you have to, it has to change into just, well, I'm not, I'm just going to feel it, you know, like, well, that works when people are very intuitive and stuff, but you have to, at some point it has to, like change into, into a decision, like a technical decision. And for me, like, I always like to filter all of that through um, the, just the fundamentals, proportion, value, uh, color, edge, and composition. I like adjusting all of those things. So like, let's say like, like edge, edge wise, right. Let's say there's somebody that's more villainous, um, you know, in, I mean, this is like a more simple example, but you would take edges and, and really harden them give them really rigid elbows or really super pointy elbows or whatever pointy chin, like, you know, all those things are very common. People are aware of that stuff and they kind of, you know, understand that language, you know, but then there's more subtle and more, you know, perhaps more sophisticated ways to, uh, to do that too. Like by, you know, adjusting color relationships or by lengthening proportion a little bit. Like I even do this on portraits. Like if I'm doing a portrait commission of somebody, I will actually change that quite a bit, like, it, like if I'm in the mouth right here and 
I want, you know, him to look a little bit more happier. All I have to do is like kind of bring the corner of the mouth up. That's it. And he'll start to look a little bit happier. Yeah. And, um, and actually he looks pretty psycho when, <laughs> when he's got his eyes like straight like that, he looks a little bit more happy, but he does when, look a little strained. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he looks yeah. a little over it. Right. Right. So, so like the choice to make like his eyes for, for instance, like, um, more buggy like that. There's kind of cartoonish, you know, they're kind of like the eyes are kind of cartoonish, Yeah, yeah totally. but I'm making them, uh, but then I'm, um, like juxtaposing that with like the realistic, uh, rendering of everything, you know? And so like the, yeah. there's a lot of like back and forth with that and different decisions about what colors I'm going to use. Like, like I said, like, um, going the classical route is the fun part to me because that's the, that's the side that like, like keeping the colors, you know, very warm and doing things like that. Mailbox making it look like oil paint. That's what's going to, you know, kind of make it look more serious. And then you've got like a guy with a C on his hat, you know, and it's hilarious. So, um, so yeah, there's all those de- little decisions. Like sometimes it's area by area. Sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, adjust it based on, you know, uh, it's, it's like kind of an on the fly thing. It's an on the fly thing and I'll be doing that, but, but I keep those broad concepts in mind so I can adjust as, as, as I need to. Like um, I, I did a portrait of my mother-in-law and, and she's kind of like a very, she's very caring, but she's very feisty person. And that's why I, one of the things I love about her, my wife's the same. She's super feisty. I love it. And, um, and I, I tried to, you know, put some of that into a portrait, like just a lot of different decisions with values, edges, different things like that. And actually there were some people at the show that came up to me and I said, they were talking about something. I said, well, tell me about her personality based on my painting. And they were kind of saying everything that I was saying, which is very interesting because, you know, I didn't expect that because, you know, I didn't know if it would resonate, but to other artists, I think it, they can kind of see it, you know? Yeah, um, so, so I try to think that way. And that, that's sort of my process with it. it and that's the cool part because it changes from painting to painting. So, right. so let's, okay, let's, let's get into, let's start a little bit. I got a question from Chelsea and she's right. like, how would you describe your style? Oh, how would I describe my style? Irreverent, maybe I think is one one thing, but it depends what painting you're talking about. But but um, I don't know. I think I think probably the way that I would describe my style would be um, a la prima, like or or um, like I really like direct painting. So I think representational, what I think would be a really fair way to represent like most of my work, like just like to say that. And then. Um, I think in terms of my painting style, I would say more direct painting or a la prima painting or however you want to say that. Like that, that's typically what what I would say. Um, the subject matter I have kind of varies quite a bit, but I'm sort of in a long term transition right now. I mean, I say long term because it's, you know, I, I worked with galleries and did things like that. And I'm starting to build up my chops for the imaginative side of things. And I've been doing that for, you know, for years and I want to want to eventually do, you know, a bunch of illustrations, do a bunch of things like that. And so I've been going through like area by area, trying to iron out my technique you know, from the imaginative side. Um, and so for me, my style, that may, that may end up kind of deviating a little bit because I just, that side of things, like the imaginative stuff may take me in a direction that I'm not, I haven't been before, you know, so I'm, I'm excited about it. I want to keep growing. I don't, one of the reasons I left I, I, I haven't left fully, but I've left, you know, somewhat the gallery scene is because they don't encourage um, any kind of growth in the artist at all. You'll do a painting of a barn or something, right? Like, let's say you're out on a trip and you do a painting of a barn and they'll be like, oh, this is great. This sold. And you're like, oh, good. You know, and they're like, we need like five more barns. And I'm <laughs> like, well, I'm not a barn painter, you know, and I was like, I was just there in you know, Wisconsin or whatever. And there was this barn and they're like, no, 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 we need more barn paintings. I'm like, okay. So that's what, that's what happens all the time. Like they don't, they could invest in the artist and, and just educate the person that comes in and, you know, say, well, you know, this is, this was done here and tell the story and stuff like that. But for some reason they, they're not as willing to do that. I guess it's harder to sell things like that, I guess. But, um, but there's that push, that push to like, just, just do what you did before, do what you did before, do what you did before. So um, with illustration, it's, it's, there's a little bit of that, I think, but it's not as bad actually, I don't think. So um, I don't know. We'll see, but I'm not, I'm not closed off to gallery stuff. I have some other things lined up and I'm working on a, a couple of shows with some people and stuff like that, but it's, it's, I don't know. I'm kind of, there's some, there's some downsides to it too. 
So I can imagine change is always a difficult thing. To yeah. 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 But you know what, though? I love it, man. Like I, I thrive on that, actually. Like I like feeling uncomfortable and I like doing things that I'm really crappy at. I, I seek out things that I'm really bad at. And uh, it, so I can, you know, like, it, it depends on what it is, of course, but um, but I'll, I'll seek out a lot of things that I'm bad at. So I can I just like get addicted to learning stuff. So I feel like, man, I could just like I could, I could learn forever. I could just sit there and be an art student for like the rest of my life. And that's all I would do. And then eventually I'd be like, I guess this painting's good, you know, after 80 years. <laughs> Nice. No, it, no, it's fantastic. It yeah. <laughs> a comment. Earlier, we were making a comment. Uh, uh, Elephant March said that they had, had some friends, that person had some friends that made a short with the uh, with cereal mascots all sitting down to dinner. Nice. Uh, little mini That's boxes awesome. of cereal. So, yeah, super funny. That's um, hilarious. So let's talk about, um, I guess, let's talk about where, like, your origins. Where did you start? Where, where was your, where's the, where did, where, did, where did you come from in that sense of where'd you get your start? Yeah. So this is an interesting one for me. Um, I actually didn't start painting or drawing. I didn't draw or paint a thing until I was 21. So I literally sat at my desk at my job and I was working at, it was just like, I was just filing and stuff. I was doing an office job in Pennsylvania and Mm -hmm. I was sitting there and I just said, I was looking around and I was like, I can't end up like the, the people there were unhappy. You know, they were like unhappy with their lives. They just come to work and complain the whole day. Yeah. And that they were just like, I hate what I'm doing and stuff, but no one would change it. Everyone would just stay there. So I was looking around and I was like, this person's 60, this person's 40 and I'm 42 now, which is, which is funny. But, um, but I would look around and say that. And, and, and I was like, I'm going to be here. Like, this is going to be me. I was like, I got to do something else. So I literally sat at my desk and wrote out what would be the best job ever. And, um, and so I was like, I don't want a boss. I want to do something creative. I want to do, you know, and so I said, well, I guess I should be an artist. And I was like, okay, cool. I, I'll start doing that tonight, you know? And, and everyone was like, what? <laughs> like everybody tonight, we're just going to start. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So I went home and did a portrait and it looked like, like the Napoleon dynamite portrait, you know, like where he's like, I spent that time shading your upper lip, you know, that one, yeah. like, like that's what it looked like. It looked so bad. And my wife was, was like, you could do this. You could do it. Like she was the only one that actually, you know, believed in me. Like, like no one else did. They really didn't. And, and uh, everybody just thought I was nuts. Like they were like, what? And so then I said, all right, well, I got to get good training. And there's a long story with that too. But, but I was like, I got to get good training. And, um, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to go into illustration, but I thought I needed a really good solid foundation because I had done nothing. So I said, well, I'm going to get, you know, go learn this atelier method so I can, you know, so I can, uh, you, you know, learn this classical way. And I'll use that as a good basis for, everything that I do, you know, illustration wise. Well, then I fell in love with oil painting and fell in love with all that stuff. I actually went to, this is where everybody else, they really did think I was nuts. I said, they said, well, where are you going to study? And I said, well, there's these two people that studied at the Florence Academy of Art and they taught at the Florence Academy of Art in Italy and they live in South Dakota and I'm going to go study with them and like four other students. And they were like, what the heck, dude? You know, <laughs> it's crazy. But, but I wanted to be good, you know, and, and the classes that they were teaching at the university where I was working, like they were just so bad. Like they were just telling me to express myself and they weren't really telling me how to draw, you know, and, or paint or anything. And so, um, so yeah, so I, so I headed off, my wife and I headed off there and, and everybody was like, you'll be back. You'll be back in six months. And, you know, I was there, I would work, I would work, um, eight hours in the morning so i'd get up at five and work at this like bread place it was like a like a you know they'd make their own bread and stuff it was called bread smith or whatever but it was it was actually a fun job it was good but um but i'd get up at five go work till like 12 or one and then go to the studio till nine or whatever so that was like my day my day for about four years so i kind of just said i'm like going to go to boot camp sort of awesome (laughs) yeah that's nice that's nice it's it's, i think part of it is really scary oh ace ace is saying uh, I'm assuming Ace is making a comment on the on the the, the doldrum job. He's the, I'm feeling you. On that. Yes, yes, um, yes. So yeah, I would. So let's, I would just let me interject another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Roll. I know you got thick stories. Um, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. No, it's great to hear this stuff. I love hearing the, the challenges. Right, the blow by blows are fantastic. That's right. What uh, what the, what are the brushes? Are, are you making a lot of custom brushes, or do you do you um, do you just kind of stick with the stocks? I stick, well, I'm using a Kyle, like Kyle brush, 
okay. um, like his stuff, like his stuff is so good. Ever since I saw his stuff, I was like, but you know, I, I kind of use standard ish brushes. I really do because I've found that, you know, well, there's a, I have like a, like a concept area. Like there's occasional brushes that I'll reach for that are like weird or whatever that I'll want to use for, to get something or whatever, like a brush like this or something. But most of the time, I'm just using like three or four. It's just, I like having the libraries there to give me the options to pull from it if I need to. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't tend to be somebody that relies too much on brushes, I would say. Um, and I, I, a lot of what, cause a lot of what I've done too with oil painting is, is just, you, I mean, I've turned the brush around and used the, the base, of the brush and all that stuff. Like you find ways to use the tools that you have in an interesting yeah manner you know like a palette knife or whatever so i find i can use one brush in a number of ways like this brush like let's say um i'm doing something in the background i can do this right or i can drop down the opacity and i can make it really soft or, or i can you know i mean like there's a lot of different things i could do with that brush like just by viewing it differently like a lot of people don't make the size of their brush like massive like that and or you know i mean i don't know there's there's lots of ways to go about it but i don't i'm not a big I, pretty much whatever I can do here, I could do on, on on another program most of the time. It might be a little bit more annoying on something else, but but I can do it do it somewhere else too. So nice. We've got another yeah. question from Ace. Kind of maybe this will transition us back into your story. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. But what what were the challenges you faced uh, in starting up? Okay, very first challenge were my in laws, and I do not blame them in the slightest. But when you have to stand in front of your in-laws and tell them you're going to provide for their daughter by being a fine artist, like it doesn't go well, you know? So right. <laughs> that was the first, I don't blame them at all, especially being the older now. Well as well, I am a fine artist and I, <laughs> my, my paintings sell for millions. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. And I definitely couldn't say that, <laughs> you know? So, so it was like, it's, yeah, it was funny. It it's, you know, cause they kind of, they're my biggest fans now, but they like, they were just like, what, you know, and I'm like, I, I'm kind of a, I, I like a lot of different things. I'm enthusiastic about a lot of different things. And so people that don't know me think that I'm just going to give up on something, you know, and, and when I'm starting it, like it, I come across that way. I come across kind of like, you know, like I, like I said, okay, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do this portrait. You know, and and I'm gonna do the self portrait, and let's let's see where we end up. And everybody would be like, "Oh, he's gonna end up quitting, right?" Well, then I don't stop. I don't stop. You know, it's been whatever twenty years. I'm still going. So, um, so it's I tend to that tends to happen with me. Uh, you know, people tend to feel like that. So that was the first challenge. Um, and then you know, getting out there doing that training that was very difficult. You know, doing sixteen hours a day um, was really difficult. And we, I mean, we had to eat lentils for you know, like a month once my wife and I, we didn't have any money and, you know, all, all those challenges are there. And, and, but then, you know, as I started um, progressing, I was actually starting to sell some paintings and stuff. And my wife actually got really, really sick. It's a long story, but she was like allergic to all this stuff, but she was losing tons of weight. She was down to like 80 pounds. And, and so I had to, I wasn't making enough. I think I was making like, I don't even know, like $16,000 a year or something like that, or 12,000 or something. And so that was right when I first started, you know, trying to step out and be a professional. And so I thought, okay, um, you know, now I, so I had to get another job. So I got a job and I was like, okay, this is what's going to happen. I was like, man, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do it. You know, that was, that was like a real, I said, okay, I got to take care of my wife. I got to do this, but you know, I just have to give this up for now. And, and, um, and thankfully things worked out. She was okay and all that stuff. But that was another time of challenge where I had to like, double down and do it again. It's like, it's crazy. So yeah, how do you, so yeah, let's, so let's speak to that. I mean, what are, what are the things There's a lot of stuff, you know, like I do art because I'm literally, I just can't do anything else. So right. I'm trying, right. You know what I mean, so I, I mean, that's, what's the driver for you? Cause I don't know, you know, I've had conversations with people. It's like, Oh, what should I do for a living? It's like, I don't know, but right. You know, and I, and I can't give them an idea that doesn't end up sounding like, well, you should start your own business and become an entrepreneur and, and kind of, Captain right. Ship, right. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I'm not going to yes. tell you, go, go be the guy that swabs the deck. You know? Right. Right. But, so from I, always, I, point, I always tell people that what my advice for them always is you got to consider the day to day. So like, for instance, I was a, um, I was in a band when I was younger and I loved, I played guitar. I still play guitar. I love it. You know, and 
I was like, I'm going to be a rock star. And, you know, so you can kind of see like the artistic slant, at least. I mean, even though I didn't draw before, but, but we were, I was hardcore into it, man. Like I, we were, we like saved up all this money and we went to go um, record and we had to eat like peanut butter and jelly. We saved up like $5,000 from like our little mini tours and stuff like that. And we started, we started playing like four or five nights a week. We were doing that for like a couple of years. But then I realized I was like, I actually hate this. I was like, I hate this so much because you're playing the same songs over and over and over again, over and over again. I mean, just play and the lights, you know, when you start playing a lot, like the lights are shining down, you can't really see the crowd. So every, every single show feels the same. Um, and people yeah. say the same things when you get down and you're bored. And I'm like, man, I'm going to go back to the studio and record again, but you can't do that. You got to record and then you got to go around and you got to tour and do all that and, and make waves. And, and, and so the day to day to me was actually a, it felt like a massive grind. And so I thought, Oh, I'm going to be a rock star. And, you know, I'm glad that we weren't good enough because if we were, I, I'm not sure I would have been happy. I probably would have been, you know, I wouldn't have liked it very much, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so it's, it's one of those things where I always tell people, make sure you consider the day to day. Cause I actually, my, I had some buddies that, um, worked for a company. Um, well, are they still, uh, most of them still work there, but, um, massive black, do you know, guys know massive black? Oh, you know yeah, what I'm talking massive about? Black. Oh. oh, I think we talked about that to cost. I think we talked about that. Yeah. But I, I went there and spent some time there and I was like, okay, I want to see if I want to be part of a pipeline, like at a game company or something like that. Cause that was a, I, I you know, I said, guys, do you mind if I just kind of see how it works? And they were like, no, no, come on over. So I, I was like there with Andrew Jones and he, I was sitting at his desk and Marco Jurjevic and like all these guys and Wes Burt and all them, you know, guys are just killers, you know, and I'm yeah. watching them. And I was like, I was like, man, I don't think I want to be in an office like this. I don't think I want to do this. I said, and that's when I said, I think I'm going to do some oil paintings. I'm going to start working with galleries. I'm going to do some stuff like that and see where, where it leads me, you know, and, and go that route. Cause I didn't, I, I felt the same sort of, I remember talking to like Kemp Remillard and he was talking about a project they were doing and what he had all these, he showed me the thrown away ideas that he had and mm -hmm. the throwaway ideas he had that the person that the client didn't want were so good. They were so good. And he's like, yeah, they just want a lady chained up to a dragon or something. And, and I started laughing. He goes, no, for real, that's what they want. And I was like, oh, sorry. You know? So it, it sort of had in some ways had the same, it wasn't exactly the same, but, it had that same sort of feel as a, as an office for me. And so I, it just, it built up that distaste for me. And I was like, you know what, I'm either going to freelance or I'm going to do, um, you know, gallery work and work for myself, work in my studio and, and do that. So that's kind of the route that I went. And, and I, 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 I really was thinking about the day to day. I was like, I'm gonna have to drive in, come into the office. Do I really want to make that commute? And, you know, and, and I wanted to be there for my kids too. Like I, I knew I wanted to have kids. And so I was like, I want my kids to be able to come in and interrupt me in the studio. And I, you know, I don't know. I, and I've really wanted it to be like that. And it's, it's, it's been like that, which has been fantastic. It's been great. I feel very, very fortunate to be able to do what I've done. It's been, it's been awesome, but, but I, but yeah, I always made the decision based on what my day to day was going to be. And I just did not want to commute. I didn't want to get in the car and commute. I didn't want to do it. So no, that's now, now, now nobody is, right? Right. <laughs> no, it's like, careful what you wish for, right? Right. Yeah. So, so in terms of kind of like where you're at, what are the what are the projects you kind of you're 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 looking for, you're pursuing, and, and maybe even what's the what what have you worked on so far? Kind of a two parter question that you really are proud of. Chelsea was asking earlier, so I just getting back. Yeah, to absolutely, absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm proud of all like all my gallery work and stuff like that, like all the still lifes that I've done, all the portrait. I mean, I'm always doing like portrait commissions and stuff like people will will pull me aside. I love that stuff. Like I I love that stuff. Like this kind of portrait that Sergeant did like technique wise and stuff like that. Like I and there's there's a you know, I I can say this pretty confidently like with this kind of a portrait like a portrait commission like that and that I'm good at that like I'm really good at doing that um there's not many things that I would say like I'm good at but at that I can do really well I like mm. that too it's fun if you get a good if you get a good person <laughs> to work with if you get a bad person it's like it's not it's not nice so I'll be very I'm very selective about that now but um uh, but, but I'm really proud of all, all that gallery work, all that stuff. I'm really proud of, um, well, I just finished, I just showing you, I wonder if I have it up here. Um, I just finished those, uh, those, uh, 500 textures 
and yeah, let's, um, yeah, explore some of that yeah those were great i mean yeah great so like as you can see i did that skin ball up in the upper right for his skin yeah. you know like a reference i did that in like probably 30 seconds after doing all these textures so i started this project where i was i like this is that side where i'm trying to build my imaginative the, the imaginative side i'm trying to buff up that technique and i'm hitting all these different areas anatomy yeah. and construction is next for me and stuff but texture was one of them and um this started off with me just doing some i think the first one was like the soap one where's the soap one like i did soap like i saw it in my shower and i was like i'm gonna where's where is that one because i made i did it i did there it is so i did it like it was a pink bar of soap and then it was sudsy and i was like how would i paint that so that kind of wow, started a, me thinking up on that a little bit more that's the detail yeah. on this. i think they're yeah yeah so so that's the that's it what it looks like so it's pretty loose like you know, in terms of uh, how I'm laying down the strokes, but then when you back up, hopefully it pulls together. And so I was trying to figure out how to break down all these textures into like what makes them the way they are, right? Like what's the difference between wet and slimy? Like how do I visually represent that? So I started yeah. exploring all of that and then it just kind of snowballed and Bobby was like, you should do a class on schoolism about that. And, and you know, and then I was like, well, I should do 500. I think 500 would be a good number. <laughs> <laughs> just make a number random 500 yeah, yeah and i was like okay oh, so how long did it take you to do all 500 i don't know but i will tell you this i don't know but like so but this, i've averaged it out so i think i think each one is like an hour to an hour and a half like average an hour probably because because i have to kind of figure it out first you know some of them were 20 minutes some of them were two hours um, because I just didn't know quite how to capture it, you know, cause I, I did tried not to copy what I was seeing. Sometimes I did at first, but I, I tried not to copy things exact. I tried to think about them and draw them in a different angle. Sometimes I just liked them. So I would draw them the way they were, but, um, but so it's like 500 hours or more, maybe, maybe 700 or something. So if you think about that, what is that? 40, 40 hours a week, that's 160 a month. Right. So that's 163, 20, 480. So it's like, a little over three months of full-time work to get it, nice. <laughs> which is crazy. So, I, cause I did this on the off moments, but, but this is the way that I like to do things. So like, I have these other categories of things where I really want to beef up my imaginative side of things. Cause the rendering side, the realistic side, I, I feel pretty comfortable with that after doing working from life and doing oil paintings and stuff. But, um, but so I'm going to be doing the same thing soon with anatomy and construction. I'm working with a buddy and I'm, I'm going to do like an ecorche and ZBrush and, I'm going to do like, you know, a thousand hands, a thousand feet, a thousand, like, like I have all these, these different things I'm going to be doing. Um, but the nice thing was when I did, this was my final texture, this 500, <laughs> which um, was a self-portrait, of course, you know, if you guys can see like, <laughs> it looks exactly like, you. yeah, <laughs> it looks exactly, you know, um, and, but the nice thing about it was I really didn't use almost any reference for this at all. I like, I glanced at the textures, like I had them there, but I found that I wasn't even using them. And so then I realized, okay, good. That, that, that info has sort of, you know, I've absorbed it, you know, by doing, nice. cause you start to see common, common things and all them. And, um, and so that's been, that's been really good. And I want to do some stuff with that. People are like, you should make a coffee table book out of that. And, um, I was and just going to say that. And so you have, what resolutions are, are those that? Oh, you know, it's high, that? dude. Let me see. It's really yeah, high. Coffee it's really high for, that for sure. I'll show you the file. So I'm going to do that. And then also I'm working with a buddy to do um, like, I'm, I'm thinking I might do like some NFTs with that, you know, cause there's like a lot of, he was telling me you should do some NFTs. I was like, maybe I will like each one of these could be like an NFT. And I hadn't thought about that, but, um, but maybe, uh, you know, like maybe that if somebody buys the book, they get an NFT or something, I don't know, or something like that, but look, it's 20,000 by 11,000 and it's 300 DPI. So it's really big. That's really big. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the individual slices are because you could do a whole little breakdown of each one, two or three on a page with with some exactly. That'd be great. Exactly. So, so this is this like I guess looking at you know what people you know people watching or in kind of aspiring artists or people that you know they want to be in studios or you know like, like you and I right. want to be kind of more independent. Right. Right. You know, so it's just like these are the like what are you thinking about in terms of you know, how do you, how do you, where's the paycheck coming from? What, what, what are the, I guess, what are the revenue streams as they, as they say, as the kids say today, right? You right. Multiple streams of income. So you're teaching courses, you're making exactly like, you make books, you know, how does that, how does that plan roll out for you in terms of like potential or what you think is the future bright, or is it just a, you know, constant slog of, uh, you know, making more stuff? 
right it's hard to make your own it's hard to be the guy when you have to you know not just empty the inbox but you have to build the inbox to be able to put stuff in it to be able to do that's right that's right and and there's always this is the thing there's always pluses and minuses like it's not that being a freelancer is all glorious and you know like oh my gosh i just get to sit down i feel inspired all day and it's like it's not like that like it's you know but also in a studio it's not like everyone's supportive and and they all like you know trade it's you know there's always upsides and downsides to everything and so some people want to be a part of the team want to be a part of a team and mm-hmm. love that and thrive in that environment some people want to be in their studio listening to music and they don't want to talk to anyone at all you know they want everyone to ignore them you know and so you know like it, you're going to have a different a different way but i think i think that's the thing that day to day is really that should be the thing that drives you like the day to day because um that's the easiest way to understand whether you're going to like it or not. And um, yeah, I don't, and really think about that because do you hate making a commute? Are you going to have to, like, you have to make an awful commute every day and you know, do, like that, the job might be great, but if that's the case, you know, you may, you may absolutely just end up loathing it for that reason. So um, yeah, I don't know. So just be, you know, it, it's, you have to kind of think about who you are as a person, I think, and and understand what you what you want to do, whether you're actually, you know, some people think they can do things on their own, like they can stay motivated on their own and keep working. Some people, some people don't expect themselves to be able to, but they can. And, you know, I don't know. I, I have some buddies that work at Pixar and, and um, you know, they've just kind of gone out on their own, like Daniel Ariega and, and all those guys. And I went to Ireland with them to teach a workshop at, um, and, and it was cool to hear them because they had worked in a studio and now they're working freelance on their own. And, and it, it was cool to hear their sort of progression. And they, they see both sides. I asked them that question. I was like, you know, what's better? What do you think is better? They said, it's just different. You know, they said it's just different. So um, yeah, the mechanics are a little different for sure. Yes. 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 And he's like, you know, he mentioned like Daniel was like, well, look, he's like, when I'm home, He's like, I get interrupted so much. He's like, I'm so not used to it. He said, I get interrupted so much. He's like, I'm having to really get used to that side of it. I said, yeah, dude. I said, yep, yep. I said, now you're in my world. I was like, I love it though. I'm surprised my kids didn't come in here and interrupt me right now and right. come in and say, guess what? I'll be like, what? There's a cricket in the backyard. I'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, yeah, I, think that's, part- you know, I guess it's part of the thing is, is depending on you know the, the, the viewers right now, it's kind of, everyone has different drivers for whatever yes. life they're in. So, you know, you right. want to, you're thinking about changing your job. So you want to have, you know, your kids, you want to be at home and that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and yeah, but I mean, if you're, but yeah, if you've got, and the whole thing is, is like, if you've got no responsibilities like that, you know, you can kind of, I always tell people like you could pretty much take any kind of job related risk and it's okay. So like, I mean, my wife and I, when we didn't have kids, like we were out there, we were working together in South Dakota on, on this dream for me, you know, and trying to make it happen. And um, we, you know, we uh, were eating lentils for like a month, but it's okay. Like it was okay. You know, it wasn't like, it's fine. Like we, we look back on it now and we laugh and, you know, it was kind of crappy at the time, but, but we got through it. And so well, those, you, those are the good stories. I'm going to say kudos. Number one, sorry to cut you off. A little no, bit. no, I love it. I love Just, it. Go ahead. Your wife, I think the support factor is fantastic to be able to go. Oh, yeah. It. My wife is the same way, you know, in terms of, no, you got to do this. She wasn't saying, no, you got to get a job driving a bus. Right. It, that, that conversation didn't come up, you know? Right. So I said, I, cause I left a, I left a good, good kind of corporate environment, still doing freelance, but it mm-hmm. left a good solid kind of corporate client to kind of pursue my own thing. And she was like, yeah, you got to do it because that job is driving you crazy. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's what my wife said to me. She said, and I, you know, it's so cool that she said that because it's, it sounds like, our, you know, our wives are like in, in sync with that. Cause my wife said to me, she said, uh, I just didn't want you for the rest of your life. She said, we were young, we could do it. She said, I didn't want you for the rest of your life to, you know, just hate, like hate your life because I when I would I'm telling you man when I would go to that office I had this sick feeling in my stomach when I would um push there was like this this door you know one of those metal doors that you push open you yeah. know and I, I and I had this sick feeling in my stomach like the pit of my stomach every time I went in there 
And I remember like for like three or four weeks, one time I said, all right, I'm going to try at this job. I was like, I'm going to try and I'm going to, I'm going to make this work. And so I, I went in, I was like trying to be helpful and trying to do things. And I was like, Hey, listen, we could convert our files over to digital and we could do this. And they basically were like, shut up and file. <laughs> and that's when I was like, okay, it's done. Like, like it's, this is not, I'm out of here, you know? And, and it was really funny because when I announced I was leaving, all the other people that were my age that were there were like, you can't leave. They're like, you can't leave. I was like, you guys need to leave too. I was like, you need right. to leave too. I was like, get out. Like, you can't. You know? <laughs> so people said to me too, so many people said to me, they're like, well, what are you going to do if it doesn't work out? And I said, well, I can even, I said, I don't know. I said, something else may come up. I said, but even if I come back here, I said, I will know that I tried. I said, and knowing that I tried is going to make it much more palatable for me to do this for the rest of my life. I said, but I said, you guys are forgetting something. I said, they said, what? I said, what, what happens if I succeed? What happens then? Right. What happens to my life if I succeed? And, and, you know, that's what happened. And it, it's, you know, I, I'm doing what I love. People ask me for a dream job. I'm, what's your dream job? I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm totally doing it. So no, that's, yeah, Captain that's Crunch. Amazing. Yeah, people, Captain no, Crunch. <laughs> we're on a live stream talking about life and creative pursuits while you paint a portrait of Captain. I, to be honest, that is like it. That's it's funny. My my friend, my son Sam, he would like um, in Pennsylvania before we moved here to Texas. Like he would bring his friends out to the studio to see the studio because it was in the backyard. We had like an acre, so it was like further back in the property. And he mm -hmm. would be like, his friends would come back and they come in. They say, oh. What's that monster, that weird thing he's painting? Like, what is that? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's what my dad does for a living, you know? <laughs> right. That's the great, you know, that's the, I, when, when we, you know, having a child in, and being able to explain what you do, you know, and it's this kind of stuff, that's a fantastic, like, how would it, how would you not be happy to, to be able to share this? Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's definitely like the, I didn't think it would be, but it's definitely like the cool dad thing. It's like, well, my dad draws like monsters all day and they're like, Haha. you know, people are left. They're like, no, for real. It's like, yeah, yeah he kind of does, you know? <laughs> nice. So oh, you got a fun. couple of questions coming in. All right. Bring uh, them on. So, bring them on. Uh, CJ Ellison is asking, uh, what are the, what's, what do you find the most challenging about learning art? What, I guess maybe, you know, when you're talking about when you went to, to study and what were the things that, or find whether it's principles, I guess, in, and even the day-to-day -day stuff, but maybe probably art mm. techniques or, or some component of that. What was the, what were some of the challenges there? Yeah, I think, I think the most, the most difficult thing, um, I'm trying to think like, the, cause there's so much that's difficult. I think, I think, you know, honestly, I mean, each individual thing is very difficult, like proportion. So I always break it down to the fundamentals, like proportion, value, edge, color, and composition. And all of those things are difficult for a number of reasons. Like they're just very difficult. But I think the biggest challenge is keeping all of those things intact and making all that work at the same time. Um, it's a bit like I always describe it to students like you've got to pretend like you're teaching a kindergarten class because you can't like if you start like sitting down with Jimmy and you're like, hey, Jimmy, you know, uh, like uh, let's work on your math or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like 20 minutes later, you're. Jimmy's doing great in math and you turn around and the room is like destroyed, you know? And so that's the way it is like art artistically. I think like when, when you're making a composition, you've got to think about all of those things and you've got to manage them all and managing those requires you to like dive in to get all the subtleties and really jump in to get things right. And then to jump back out to, to, to get the big picture and make sure you're on track. And that man, like managing all of that is very, very difficult, I think. And that takes a long time to learn, but, I think one of the hardest things about art too is and I, I think you, you always feel like you're up against a wall and it's hard to explain for somebody that hasn't done art before. It must feel like this with, for musicians too, but you know, that are pushing to that high level, but like, but you always feel like your face is up against a wall. And what I mean is uh, you, you break through a wall, like you, you come to, you figure out some, something, right. You're like, Oh, I need to do this. And, and then you just go, go, go. And you run, run, run. You start doing that. And then before you know it, you've hit another wall and you're like, I can't do this, or I can't do this. And I can't do that. And so you're constantly seeing in your artistic life, like what you can't do. I don't know. It's um, that's the, that's a hard part for me is like, it takes a lot of times it can feel like you're walking through a desert and you just have to keep taking steps 
And everybody that's been there before you is like, oh, just keep walking. There's an oasis there. And you're like, is there, is there really <laughs> is there like, really? I, you know, cause it doesn't really feel like it, you know? And I think for me that was, and see, I started later. So I started from absolute bare bones. And I mean, I burned my, I burned my drawings on the roof of the studio. Like I stabbed through with the, with the back of a brush, you know, the brush handle I've stabbed through canvases. I've like, run over them with my car for like cathartic reasons. And I mean, I've, I mean, it's a cliche montage now. <laughs> I know, right. I know what it is. You could make it, you totally could make a cliche. Right? Montage. It's awesome. <laughs> no, people it's need so to know that's the real thing. I think the, the weird thing is, is no matter how many times you hear it, I think a lot of people think the artistic struggle, you think, well, it can't be like we go, everyone goes through this individually, even though you hear that we're all kind of, we go through kind of similar things. But you yes. still you still feel alone in the struggle. Yes, totally. Yeah. Like you really do, and it's and it's and like I, it's something about artists too. Like we look at everyone else's work, and um, I just like remember my sister getting together with her teenage friends when she was younger, and she'd be like, "You look so beautiful," and they were like, "No, you're so beautiful." No, I'm not. I'm an ugly cow, you know. Like, but you're really pretty, you know. And, and that's how that my sister would function when, <laughs> you know, I'd listen to her friends and that's the way we are as artists. Like we look at someone right. else and we're like, your work is so awesome. And so, and then they're like, yours is good. You're like, no, it's not it sucks, you know? Right. And <laughs> so, and we truly do kind of feel that way. Like we feel like, you know, so it's, it's always, t it's like something about our mentality that, that brings us there, but um, it's just hard. People don't realize how mentally taxing it is and how they haven't, if they haven't tried it, they don't realize, you know? I don't know. No, it's tough. Yeah, you're you're taking a lot of information in and you're trying to digest it, you know, kind of come to terms with it and then put it out into the world, express yourself. In yeah. Way. And you, you, there's a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of things that go into like, you know, how you perceive yourself and how you other people, you know, all that so everything seems kind of amplified, all the regular kind of social issues or yes. challenges that we go through from a from an artistic expression point of view how will people take this because we're not we're not just making cardboard boxes right i mean we're literally Correct. designing the cardboard box you know yes exactly yeah yeah exactly so, and, and we're trying time. like we're trying something like we're putting ourselves out and trying something like we care about what we're doing and we're trying and when you start trying to do something and people start commenting or start you know, whatever about what you're trying, when you're actually giving it your all and it's not good and you know, it's not good. It's like, that's hard to handle. You know, no, it is. It's definitely, um, there are a couple of comments, uh, somebody, uh, Sergeant, I'm going to send Obstablat or Obstalat is saying that that book would be, the textures in the book would be, um, would be, they would pre-order that immediately. Oh, nice. That's good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Being, no, no, totally. It, it definitely would be a thing. And winged Dante is saying that uh, the origin story uh, is, it rings very true. Uh, oh, good. Good. Uh, that their story was in the thirties instead of their twenties. Oh, okay. Wow. Nice. And you know, that's, that's the other thing too, is like people said I was starting late and I remember saying to people, I was like, I'm not starting late. I said, I'm, I said, I'm 21 years old. I said, what if I live till I'm 80? I said, gosh, I got a lot of time. I was like, I got a lot of time to do it. And that, but for some reason they made me feel, so I can imagine if you're starting at 30, it's like, everyone's gonna be like, what are you doing? Like, how can, you know, I, I know it's, <sighs> I, there's so many people that are, and I feel like I used to, I used, but I heard it so much that I started going back at people. So people would say to me, like, they would say, well, you know, there's, it's called starving artists for a reason or whatever, you know, and I would start to say, oh, well, you know, do you, so, you know, a failed artist and they were like, no, I was like, oh, well, do you, you know, any illustrators, do you know, any like fine artists at all? Do you know any gallery owners? Like, no, I was like, all right, well, do you know any framers? And, you know, no, no. And they, they'd start smiling and be like, oh, and I'd say, then why the heck are you sounding off on this? I was like, you have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, you have literally no clue. I was like, maybe don't say anything next time, you know? And they're like, whoa. But I was like, but I heard so many people saying it to me. I start, it started to make me angry because I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. And you're saying it's impossible for me to do it. I'm like, don't project your mentality on what you're doing based on, on to me on what I'm doing. You know, if you don't feel like you can do it, that's fine. But, you know, I think I can. So it's like, get out of my way. You know, I don't know. I started to get annoyed by, by stuff like that because I, I would see artists that were with me 
and people would do it to them and it would just kill them in the inside, you know, and I, it, bu- it bugged the crap out of me when I'd see that. I don't know. No, no, for sure. No, you've, you've picked a hard path. You realize that, right? And then it's like, yeah, of course I know. I'm very much on that right. path. I get it. But right. it's, I think anything, you know, hockey player, professional athlete, astronaut, anything that's not kind of the regular quote, I'm using air quotes, the kind of right. suit. I think right. any of these things, that those are, you know, so you want to go to the moon. So you want to invent something new. It's everyone who's pushing the, the, the norm, the status quo, I think gets that speech. Exactly. Exactly. And see, this is the thing that I want to get across to you guys, though. And this is what I told like my in-laws and it, it actually helped them kind of understand me. I said, listen, I said, I don't I'm not saying that I have to be the best artist in the world. I would tell them I'm not saying that. I said, look, I said, there's all different ways for me to make money. I said, I can you know, be a fine artist. I can, I can sell oil paintings. I can sell prints. I can teach. I can, you know, like I said, look, all else fails. I'll go teach in, you know, like an elementary school. And I said, it might be fun teaching the little kids. I said, whatever. I said, I'll have enough experience to be able to do that. I said, you know, like I said, there's all these options for me. So like, it's it, like, you know, and, and all these opportunities end up coming up when you start pursuing something and you're really trying to be great at it. Other opportunities come up and things that you wouldn't expect. Right. So I never thought as somebody that trained as a fine artist that, I would teach at schoolism. That's weird, right? Because it's mostly for like industry people, you know, that are doing like games industry and stuff. And I, I, I met Bobby at the top of a, like we were at a, at a, um, it was a massive black, it was back, you know, um, when they were doing workshops, it was before that it was like conceptart.org, but it was them, yeah. those guys. And we met at the top of this hotel, like in this like after party thing. And I, and we were both young and stuff like that. So that, relationship of me meeting him is what ended up, uh, you know, allowing me to come teach at schoolism and do all this stuff. And, and I said to him, I was like, well, dude, I said, I'm, he said, you should teach something here. And I said, well, I'm totally doing something totally different than what, what you guys are doing. And, and, uh, you know, I said, at least my background is there. I don't, I said, I don't have like Pixar or different companies like that to claim and stuff. And he said, well, no, he said, that's why I want you there. He said, you're, you have a totally different perspective. He said, you kind of have one foot in this world and one foot in the fine art world or whatever. And so I mean, who would, I couldn't plan that, you know, I couldn't plan to, to, to have that happen and have it make sense, you know? So you just kind of, you start heading down the path and if you're focused on really being good and you're focused on trying to do your best and really doing work that is high quality, and you're just always focused on that, like you will find ways to make it work, you know? And, and I don't know what, you know, you're doing with sense labs, the cost of, but but you're probably doing things at Sense Labs that you probably never thought you were going to do, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, your job description is probably all over the place, right? Yeah, <laughs> right now it's a bit of a bit of a crazy show. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, definitely in terms of well, when you're a, you know starting out company, a lot of people wear a lot of hats, you know. But that's right. the exciting part of the game. It's it's it is part of the mix, right? And if you you want to grow and find new experiences and work with great people, you know, that's this whole thing. And so to be able to you know, have, have a chance to, to interview and talk with people like you, other creatives. I mean, I can do this all day. Right. Right. So, you know, that's the wonderful thing about it. So I think, man, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love, thank you for, for, for definitely uh, coming on and, and, and sharing this, uh, your life experience. I think that's the, the big deal outside of the techniques of, of doing anything. I think it's one of the great things from, to learn is, is, is how people get through the struggles and deal with the yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, so very much appreciate We're coming up to just a couple more minutes uh, left. So just I want to, I want to just say this too. I know like they didn't tell me to say this or anything like that, but it is a sense lab sponsored thing. Guys, I just want to, I'll say it real quick. Like I got, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm actually doing an, un, I was editing that unboxing video today that I did uh, the cost. So I'm going to be putting that up my YouTube channel. If anybody wants to see it, it's just Jonathan Hardesty on at youtube.com. Jonathan Hardesty. But, um, but I just wanted to give you a shout out, man, because like I had had so many frustrations with Wacom, like, I mean, a million frustrate. Like I went through three Intuos Pros. I had an Intuos 2 for like nine years. The Intuos Pro broke like three times. It was so annoying. I had all these issues. I had a Huion just because that was like, like what I had to default to. And, um, and this, the tablet stuff that you guys sent has been absolutely fantastic. I've absolutely love it. Like I was telling the cost of, you know, there's, I, I, you know, I play guitar and there's a company named Fender that makes most of the guitars. You guys probably know them, but, but there's another company, GNL that broke off from Fender. And it's some people that used to work at Fender. 
and which is very similar to like uh to you know to sense lab soup um but the gnl guitars are better than fenders because they took their knowledge and they said let's focus on the right things let's make it with quality and not mass produce it and like to this super high degree and really listen to what guitar players want and things like that so it's very obvious that what you guys are doing there um that's exact it's just like gnl to me which i love their guitars and they're so much better than fender and everything so anyways it's been awesome because i haven't even to be honest i haven't had a, a good properly functioning tablet for a while and so um i just like i'm super stoked so i i would hate to go to the end of this and not yeah, I know you, you're not one to be like, you're not going to be annoyingly pushing your product, but I just wanted to do that for you because no, no, it is awesome. Very it's much awesome. appreciated. We're glad, we're glad you like it. We just want to make stuff that makes the process. Obviously, the technology, the great thing about it is it should get out of the way and just let yeah. you express yourself. So we definitely appreciate you uh, yeah. spending the time and giving us your honest feedback about it. We love that. Uh, that yeah, man. Works for you. And I would have told you if it was crap, too. I got to be honest. No, I would have no, said no, it was crap. Want. <laughs> we want we definitely we definitely want the feedback this is about yeah. making it for us i mean we're all creatives so we right. really want to you know really want to bring it to you but thanks very much for the for showing us your your, your skill set and talking telling us your story um there's oh, no problem, check out man. jonathan's all the links are in the in the notes below please feel free to to, to harass him stop yes him, you know what i mean him, i love it i love stalkers they're great give him, give him the love <laughs> that uh, that he deserves uh once again thanks soup so much my friend uh we will talk and everyone else thanks for joining in it's great hope, hope everybody had a great time check out the link in the chat just so you can get the 10 percent off uh for the for our tablets and uh enjoy the rest of the weekend there's a lot of creative stuff out there talk to you soon thanks man it was awesome thanks guys see you